HD is out, 4K is in. The 4K X Capture Card is one of Elgato's newest products, and it's one that we've been waiting for for quite some time. If we check out what comes in the box along with the 4K X, you're gonna find two braided cables. One is gonna be a USB-C 3.2 cable, and then the other one is gonna be an 8K HDMI cable. So if you wanna get those plus the 4K X Capture Card, that's gonna set you back $230, but if we compare it to its predecessor from before, the Elgato HD 60X Capture card, that's gonna run you $150 as of today. That's an $80 difference. But as you can imagine, you're gonna be giving up some features if you decide to go with the older option over the newer. So let's get into that. Starting off by looking at the physical construction of these capture cards, they both have an analog line in port. So if you need to use Elgato's Chatlink Pro cable to pull game and chat audio from the PlayStation or Xbox series controller, you can do that on both of these devices. On the back of these capture cards, you're gonna have your HDMI in, in out ports, but the difference is gonna be in the middle with the USB-C port on the 4K X capture card, that's gonna be a USB 3.2 type C port. So that means whatever computer you're using with the 4K X must have a compatible USB-C 3.2 Thunderbolt or super speed USB-A port with an adapter on your computer to leverage the 10 gigabit per second bandwidth speeds. So that'll give you a more reliable connection in addition to being able to capture much higher resolutions and frame rates. Other than that, the physical setup is exactly the same when using your gaming console or PC with your display. Both of these capture cards are supported on Windows, Mac, and even iPad OS. So if you have an iPad with the USB-C input on the device, then you can actually record directly to Elgato's app. This is such a fantastic feature that I'm happy is not gatekept to the 4K X capture card alone. They also come with instant game preview, the ability to pass a variable refresh rate, as well as HDR. But where the 4K X capture card starts to differ is that it offers ALLM support. So if you have a TV or monitor that supports auto low latency mode, the Elgato 4K X is one of the first capture cards that can actually leverage that feature so that your gaming experience is more precise, more in time while being able to capture it simultaneously. And then probably the biggest thing is the HDMI technology that these capture cards use. The HD60X leverages HDMI 2.0, where the 4K KX leverages HDMI 2.1. Why is this a big deal? I'm glad you asked. When you're using an HDMI 2.1 capture card, you're able to pass through and play your games in a much higher resolution and frame rate. Elgato was nice enough to put together this comprehensive spreadsheet that actually showcases what you're able to pass in and record in using the 4K X capture card. Everything you see on the top row, the 4K X can pass that quality. The left side of the chart are the resolutions that can be recorded or captured in. So for example, if you have an HDMI 2.1 display or monitor and you're playing your games in 4K 120 hertz, then you'll be able to capture or record your gameplay in the same level of quality, at least in a standard definition resolution using the 4K X. Most capture cards, if you're playing at a higher resolution and frame rate, you're never able to actually capture in that quality. With the 4K X, that is completely possible. They did make a chart similar to this for the HD60X, which you can see right now, but there's a lot of stuff here that's grayed out, and of course they do that so that they can show how much better the 4K X is. Don't let that completely fool you here. No, you won't be able to play your games in 4K 144 or 4K 120 or 2K 240 or 1080p 240. That kind of sucks, but hey, maybe you don't have a monitor or display that even supports up to those insanely high resolutions and frame rates. You might have something that just supports 1080p 120. And in that case, you're totally fine with the HD60X capture card. You should also keep in mind though, that you're not gonna be getting a picture quality difference with the 4KX. They are the same. If we put them right next to each other with the HD60X and the 4KX, you can see that maybe the 4KX is just a tad bit brighter, Maybe you should also consider the fact that most streaming platforms are not gonna even let you stream over 1080p. YouTube streaming, on the other hand, they will let you go to 2K and even 4K if you want, but for platforms like Twitch or Kick, you're gonna get the same picture quality depending on where you set your settings on your computer. If we look at the software we can use to capture and record our gameplay, looking at the Windows side first, you can use the 4K Capture Utility Tool. This software will work for both the 4K X 
and the HD60X. If you look at the top, you're gonna see the quality of your input source. And then if you go to your settings, this is where you can actually switch from HDMI to analog if you're using the Chatlink Pro cable. You'll also have the ability in this software to control the resolution that you're gonna be capturing in. Most notably missing here is the ability to capture in 120 or higher. I would have honestly liked to have seen that in this software, but it's not the end of the world because you can use software like OBS Studio or Streamlabs or Prism, and you'll be able to capture in 120 if you choose to. How about the Mac side of things? Well, for starters, there isn't any 4K capture utility software that you can use. You can, however, download the capture device utility software, which will work for both the 4KX and the HD60X, but this is where you'll be able to update your device's firmware. You'll be able to choose between HDMI audio or analog audio for the Chatlink Pro cable. And then you can also enable and disable onboard tone mapping. And the beauty of this, instead of having your recordings look can grayed out and washed, this will balance out the colors to look clean and good for a standard definition recording. OBS, Streamlabs Desktop, Prism Live Studio are great options to be able to record your gameplay in a high resolution and frame rate right on your Mac computer. You can also use the QuickTime application, but I don't really recommend that because it maxes out at 1080p 30. For those of you who are gonna be monitoring or listening to your game audio coming out of either one of these capture cards, your results are gonna be exactly the same. As I stated earlier, both of these capture cards have instant game preview. Now keep in mind, that's not real time preview as there is a little bit of delay coming from the capture card to your computer. If you're concerned about that, it's not a big delay whatsoever. It actually falls between 31 and 35 milliseconds. This is the test results that YouTuber Epos Vox actually did. That's absolutely incredible and is one of the lowest for any capture card that's on the market. Now that is not me giving you permission to play off of your preview. Do not do that because you're still gonna be at a slight, slight, slight disadvantage. Your movements won't be as fluid compared to if you're playing directly on the monitor or TV. You're fine if you're listening to just the audio. So between the HD60X and the 4KX, which one is the best for you? Well, I think the biggest thing is gonna come down to what kind of display or monitor you're using right now and if you plan on upgrading in the future. For example, if you have a 4K 120 Hertz monitor and you wanna start streaming and recording your gameplay, definitely get the 4K X capture card as you won't have any limitations in what you're playing in as well as recording. If you need further assurance for which card would work best with your setup, if you go to Elgato's website or link in the description below, you can use their capture card selector tool. Here you can choose the component that best apply to your setup, and then Elgato will give you their recommendation for which capture card you should get. What about for those of you out there that are playing on 1080p 360 hertz monitors? That was one of the things I did not see in these charts. They seem to have left it off for some reason. Also, there's no ultra wide display support as of today. It is coming in the future, so something to stay tuned for, but if you wanna play in 360 hertz or ultra wide today, then I'd recommend getting the Evermedia Live Gamer Ultra 2.1. It's a great capture card. It offers all of the great HDMI 2.1 features you'd expect, but it doesn't have the ability to match the recordings in the quality that you're playing in like the 4K X can. I do wanna note though that you should keep in mind the computer specifications required to use these capture cards. Elgato has their recommendations on their website for what you should be using. If you plan on recording 4K content with a high FPS, you're gonna need even better specifications than what they list. For macOS, they didn't specify on their product page what they would recommend for the 4K X, but from doing my own test on my M1 Mac computer and also looking at the recommended specs for Mac under the HD60X's product listing, you'll be good to go with any Silicon Macs. Quad-core Intel Macs with dedicated graphics on the other hand will work as well, but don't don't expect to record in 4K 60 or higher. The computer is definitely gonna struggle. So there you guys have it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit it with a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new around here and I will see you in the next one. Peace.